All right, a pleasant afternoon to you all colleagues, teachers. It's really a pleasure to be here with you this afternoon. I know that you have been quite busy working with the students in your schools, and I'm sure that they do um, appreciate the efforts that you put out. I will say to you that it's, it is the time that we're in really requires us to work together to see to it that we figure out how we can best treat with the needs of our students. Before I go any further, let me say to you all a happy new year, right? I know that this is the first we have been meeting like this since the start of the, 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 the new calendar year. And even though the year has changed, the circumstances under which we operate as it pertains to the delivery of content to our students, it remains the same. So we here now invite you to or two sessions, this one being the first, where we will be focusing on facilitating online mathematics through synchronous approaches. We know that you have been operating with your mixed modalities, and as you engage your students using synchronous means, as well as asynchronous means, we want to use this first session to really look at some strategies, some approaches that we can apply to ensure that you are engaging your students using your synchronous means to the best of your ability and in a way that the students can benefit from it. So I want, or better yet, I invite you to really sit back, relax, participate as best as possible, ask your questions and to use up the chat because we really want to build on our community that we have here right now. We are a, communi we are a community of educators who have a critical role to play we, during this time where education is so uncertain for many, we play the critical role in shaping the future of education. And from even the message this morning, God calls us and he calls us at different times. And we are called right now as educators to play that critical role in ensuring that we engage our students, despite all of what is going on around us right now, we still have that task, which is to ensure that conceptual delivery is maintained and our students are benefiting from the process. So I greet you all. I pray that you are well at this point in time and I hope that you have really invited out your teachers. And if there's someone who is not here today, we know that you can go ahead and share with them what you have learned on today's session. And we also see how best we can get to you the, the recording for today's session. So all the best and thank you for taking the time to be here today. Back over to you, Ms. Townsend, so you can start the, the session. Okay, thank you, Mr. Edgehill. Just allow me to continue sharing. Okay, colleagues, at this time in our session, you know, we normally like to engage you in a little brain tease, and it's early in the afternoon, so I know that our brains are still in tune. So Dr. White will take us into this session with a game of Kahoot. So over to you, Dr. White. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. I hope you are all doing well. And I want to wish you all a happy new year as well. We're going to be doing a game on Kahoot. So I'm going to ask that you Download Kahoot at kahoot.it if you do not have it on your phone. If you have it on your phone, just open your Kahoot and this is a game pin. We're gonna be looking at student mathematical practices and mathematical teaching practices. So SMPs and TMPs. Waiting for players. This is the game pin. After you have downloaded, okay, I see D Brown. After you have downloaded the Kahoot, you can um, put in your game pin and then we will begin. Waiting for a few more to join. That's Kahoot.it. Okay, I see another Nikisha Senior. That's two persons. Can we have a few more, please? Thank you. Roberts, okay, S um, Sibs, Baines, I have about five, maybe two more, and then we will begin. 
All right, let's get started. So, first question. True or false? Mathematical practices represent what students are doing as they learn mathematics. True or false? Select your answer. Okay, we still have another few seconds to go. And I see the answers coming in. Wonderful. Okay, here we go. Now I see two persons having the incorrect answer, but we have 11 persons having the correct answer. And D Brown is on top. That means you posted first. Wonderful, let's keep it going. Question number two, which best describe post posing purposeful questions? Reveal students' current understanding of a concept, make the learning of mathematics more visible and accessible for students, encourage students to explain, elaborate, clarify their thinking, or all of the above. Select your answer and post it as quickly as possible so that you can be the winner for today. You still have some more seconds to go. Counting down. And I see I have quite a few answers there. Keep them coming in. Okay. In another few seconds, we will get the answers. Okay. So here we have six persons choosing the correct answer. Wonderful. So let's see who they are. Mm. And TC is now on top. Question number three. Congratulations. Question number three. Students speak and solve mathematics with exactness and meticulousness. Which practice does this represent? Practice two, reasoning abstractly and quantitatively. Practice one, making sense and persevering. Question six, attending to precision. And practice seven, utilizing structure. Select the correct answer. All right, I see some answers coming in. We still have a few more seconds to decide on the correct answer. As we wait for it to count down. Okay, we're getting there. A few more seconds. All right, almost there. Okay, so we have eight persons posting the correct answer and let's see who is on top. TC remains on top. Wonderful, congratulations. Congratulations to everybody who have posted the correct answer. Let's take question number four. Which mathematical teaching practice makes the shift from show and tell to share and compare? Is it practice four that says facilitate meaningful mathematical discourse? Or is it practice two, which states to implement tasks that promote reasoning and problem solving? Okay, I see answers coming in already, but you still have a few more seconds to think about it. Which mathematical teaching practice makes the shift from show and tell to share and compare. A few more seconds to go. Almost there. Okay. All right, now let's see 
we have five persons choosing the correct answer. And let's see who is on top. Ah, oh, TC remains on top. All right. Congratulations, TC. And the final question, student practices form the foundation of mathematical thinking and practice for students, or is it um, our reasoning habits that form the basis for solving mathematical problems, or is it both? You have 10 more seconds to decide on your answer. I see 11 persons, 12 posted their answer and we are almost at the end. And here we go. And we have 12 persons selecting the correct answer. Let's see who remains on top. First place. Okay, in third position, we have V Wilson, four out of five. Second position, Nikki. And in first place, TC, let's give a round of applause for TC. You are the winner today. Thank you very much. Hand over back to Ms. Townsend. Thank you so much, Dr. White, for that game. I was thoroughly engaged, thoroughly taken in as I watched persons simply just changing positions as the answers came in. And um, thank you for your participation, teachers. And we are continuing with our presentation. So the objectives of today's session are, we want to look at synchronous online model and using virtual manipulatives as a tool to enhance learning. We want to take you through optimizing synchronous online engagement towards an improved learning culture. So let us dive a little into what is synchronous approach? Or sometimes when you do your research, you'll find um, authors speak about synchronous learning. So this happens in real time. Many of us have already started doing this. It mirrors the typical classroom experience and common methods that are used for synchronous learning are video conferencing, teleconferencing, we know the live chat and the streaming. This approach provides an opportunity for students to collaborate and also it helps them to deepen their learning. Common platforms that are used are our Google Meet or WhatsApp. Yes, WhatsApp is, it can be used for synch synchronous. Zoom and Microsoft Teams. But what are some of the best practices? So we've been using synchronous approach pretty much from March of last year. So we're almost a year in. Have we been using some of these best practices? Do we share expected behaviors with students and netiquette when classes resume after holiday breaks? I know we normally do this at the beginning of the term. But students need to be reminded when they return from a break, these expected behaviors. And also, we know that new students keep joining. So it's always good to refresh. Good. Post links of synchronous sessions in the stream at least 15 minutes before the scheduled class time. You know, get the links updated as you prepare for a synchronous session and get the stream updated rather. Adjust your camera settings prior to joining the meeting. You know, once our cameras, we, we start a meeting, you're allowed to do this. Become familiar with the platform. I think many of us are getting there if we're not there as yet and its features. Take time to conduct a dry run, to get comfortable with the setup, as well as to use the resources. Practice before your class time. Prepare students for the session. How do we do that? We give them a simple outline of what will be covered. And this is an outline that you can actually put in your stream. Let students know what the live session is going to be about. Orient students to the online platform. You know, many times we sometimes say, you know, this, this, this should have been done at the school. But then we know a lot of things have been happening. 
we too as teachers need to spend a little time to go through with students all the features that they will need to use on the platform. Balance content delivery with interactivity and time for reflection. Let us look at how we use that 60 or 80 minutes of our lesson. Let us see if we can create the balance between the content that needs to be shared, allow students to, to speak, to critique reasoning of others, and also allow them to reflect about what they may have learned or may not have learned in the lesson. Record your session. I know there are many, we can have many discussions about this, but we, it, it is something that I will, not, I will not get into now, but let us think about it. Record the session so it can be shared and also share any resources or materials that are used in the session. Let us put them in the class. Let the students know that they're gonna be there so they can always use them for review purposes. So now that we have looked at some best practices, we now want to look at using Microsoft PowerPoint slideshow mode to supplement this synchronous learning that we are engaged in. And I invite Mr. Johnson to take us through this section. Okay, thank you, Ms. Townsend. Good afternoon, teachers. All right, so I'll be sharing at this time. All right, so I do hope that you are able to see my screen now. All right, so we know we are now looking at the how we can use PowerPoint to enhance your students' synchronous learning experience. So we want to take some time to look at that. So in slide mode or presentation mode, if you follow my cursor to the bottom left of the screen, and I hope that you are able to see that you will see some icons, right? There, there are seven of them, starting with the slideshow option icon. Now, if you should click on that icon, you will see a pop-up menu with some features. Just want to bring our attention to the screen feature. Now you have the option of a black screen or a white screen. Let's look at a black screen. So you notice that your entire screen becomes black. And what this offers for our student is that it becomes a blackboard. So if we go to our pen, our pen tool, and select pen, our cursor now changes to actually a pointer that we can use now and write on the board. So let's write something. All right, there you go. So if we're using Google Meet or we're using Zoom and we're accustomed to Jamboard. Here we have a Blackboard and this mimic the, the traditional Blackboard with the, the chart, right? You have the eraser, or I would call it a duster, all right? And you can erase whatever is there. So we go back to the option there. Let's go back to screen and let's select a white screen now. Okay, now we can write something else. All right, so you have an entire screen that you can, you may write on. Okay, so I just want to point out as well that the information that you write on the screen for this feature, you will not be able to save it unless you do a print screen or you take a picture of it. And then you have the option now of emailing it to your student, uh, students or sending it in WhatsApp. 
All right, so let's go back to and unwhite the screen and we're back to our PowerPoint in presentation mode. So now let's look across. The next icon here we see is called a zoom into the slide feature, right? And if we click on that, we can select any area on our screen and zoom into it. So this is useful if your students are using a small screen device, a, a tablet or a phone, or there's something that you need to highlight that they're not able to see clearly, you can zoom into the screen, you can pan around, grab the screen, move about, right click to escape. All right. Now, there is a feature here that I went over, right? That was on purpose. This is called the toddle subtitle. And this, this feature is actually available only for Microsoft 365 users. So if you know that you're using Microsoft 365, then you have this option. What this option offers is for you to dictate and whatever you're saying will be written. All right, there you go. No, it also offers the option of you speaking and the whatever is written is in another language. Now we move over to the see all slides button. The see all slides help you to see thumbnail versions of your slides, which you can jump to at any point in time in your presentation. And that may become useful for you at some point. Of course, we have the arrow buttons that help you to go forward or backward within your presentation. Okay, and now we want to highlight the pen tools button. It gives you a pop-up menu as well that has a laser pointer. So if we enable that, we notice now that our cursor becomes a pointer, bright colored red circle that I can direct your attention to anywhere on the screen. All right, let's go back. We have the highlighter feature. You can highlight anything on the screen that you think is important at any point. You have the eraser and you, you can also, you have the option of erasing all ink on slide. If I click that, notice the ink has disappeared. All right, so let us try something. You have the pen feature. And so let us know, I think my color is, all right, so let's change it to black. Okay, so we have a question here and I'm just showing you how you can utilize this as well. You may want to use different colors to show like terms. So if I should demonstrate, you have four X cube plus six X cube. All right, for the purpose of this presentation, I'm just going to combine the coefficients of like terms and what we have 10 X cube. All right, change to another color just to show the unlike term being carried down. All right, so it's a good tool to use. You can change the color 
of your ink at any time to emphasize any point to make learning more um, feasible or to have children understanding clearer. One final thing I want to share with you is how you are able to save. So if I want to save whatever is on the slide, I can click escape on my keyboard or I can go to the end of my slide, right? And I'll get a dialog box, just like this one. And it asks me whether I want to keep or to discard the ink notation. If I select keep, All right, so technical difficulties there. All right, so let's let us see. Let's go back. Sorry about that. I hope that you're able to see. All right, some technical difficulties there. So please tell me if you're able to see Miss Townsend. Yes, Mr. Johnson. All we right, are. good, <laughs> good. All right, so you have the option here, whatever notation you would have made on your slide, you can delete or you can save. If you want to save all the information on your slide, all you need to do is to select Control A, you would have selected all the information on the slide, then you right click, you have the option to save your slide, that one slide, as a picture. All right, there you go. And we have our dialog box that comes up and we can save it in whatever format we wish, okay? And that's how you can use PowerPoint to enhance synchronous learning and you can also save whatever notation you would have made. And you can send that as a picture through WhatsApp or through email. I now turn over the time back to Ms. Townsend. Okay, thank you, Mr. Johnson for that information. And I do hope um, colleagues that we found it useful and that we will be able to use it with our students as we continue to enhance how we engage them in synchronous learning. So now we're just quickly going to look at some of the things that we already know about Google Meet. So let's see. Now, Google Meet, we know that one, we can, I mean, they're able to message participants. We know that the hosts have meeting controls, video audio preview. Uh, did we know it was limited to 100 participants? Mm. We have the screen sharing options and we also have the ability to integrate with Google as well as Microsoft Office apps. So let us look at the video audio preview screen. So this screen really allows us to look, to edit our backgrounds before we actually join, join the meeting. So you'd notice that we're at the screen where we're gonna be joining. So we have, and let me just change my pointer here. We have our picture icon button. Now, once we select that button, we are now able to change the background. So sometimes we want to know if we really want to turn our cameras on. We are able to change the background. We are able to blur the background. Before we actually go into the meeting, we know we may want to control sharing. We may want to control chat. So here we have our three buttons. Um, beside our present now button. Once we select that button, we will get our menu option. In that menu option, we go to settings. Of course, we can record our meeting. We can change layout. We can also continue to do some adjusting of settings. But then if we specifically select our settings button, then we have our screen and we can select, we have our, our dialog box, sorry. 
from where we can select now our host control. So here we can control the share screen, we can control the chat as well. Good. Messaging. And I think we're all, we're most, most of us are familiar and I see a raised hand there. Um, yes, Mrs. Sales. It's Mrs. Wallace. Oh, sorry about that. Go ahead, Mrs. Wallace. Okay, could you just show us about the part you just presented on where you can, um, the part you just, just finished presenting. The background? Okay, so let me just go back. I'm going to be utilizing some of Mr. Johnson's features here. Are we talking about the host control or I still need to go back a little further? Host, a little further, Mrs. Wallace? Host control. Okay. All right, so we get our, our menu option. And at this menu option, we can record, we can change the layout of the screen. We also have the full screen option. The change background can be done here as well, or caption. And we also have use phone for audio. And from the settings now, so this is where we're gonna go to look at our host control. Once we select settings, then we're taken to this dialog box on which we can further do adjustments to our audio video, but also we have settings in terms of sharing screen and we also have chat settings. Yes, Mrs. Wallace, I see your hand raised. Does it go for all the Google Meet things or it's just for the paid ones? Because I've been trying to find that recording and, and things and I have not been able to find it and I use a free one. Okay, Mrs. Wallace, you say you're using the free one, meaning the MOE schools? No, the one that you can get free online where you, you get it for limited oh. minutes, but it's still longer than what Zoom would offer. Okay, okay, I do understand. Well, it is, it is something that I would definitely have to check out for you, Mrs. Wallace, just to verify. But I know as far as the MOE um, accounts are concerned, it is available in those. Okay, but I could find that out for you just to, to verify if that is the case. Okay. All right, so once we, we, we do have also the messaging with our participants, and of course, we know our message button is very familiar to us once we're utilizing these virtual platforms. And once we select on that menu at that messaging button, then we get the drop down dialog box in which we can type our messages and send. All right. So our share screen. So I think most of us would have been already sharing screen by simply using the present now button. So once we select this present now button, then we have the option of sharing your entire screen or if you want to just share a window. So one of the things we have to be careful, if we're sharing our entire screen, then all activities that you do, all movement that you do on your screen will be shared with your participants. If you share a window, then a specific windows that you have open, you can select those windows to be shared. Good. So another good feature, which I know we've been utilizing in our classroom is our ability to view our participants list. So once we go to the people icon and that is located beside your messaging icon and select that icon, then you are able to see all the persons who are in that meeting, all right? So that in itself is an, you know, just a little reminder of some of the features that we have in our Google Meet to our disposal. So this afternoon, outside of just reminding us or refreshing us on some of these features, we want to actually share with you a sample lesson and to actually take you through these synch synchronous sessions 
and how these lessons can actually play out. So the sample lesson that we are using this afternoon, it's, for, it's set for grade seven and we are looking at algebra. So the topic, adding and subtracting like and unlike terms, the objectives that we are focused on are we want students to be able to identify like and unlike terms. We want them to be able to add like and unlike terms, subtract like and unlike terms, and also simplify algebraic expressions by grouping like terms. All right, so our focus, as we said, algebra. So, you know, sometimes when we think of teaching algebra, we start thinking about, but we're not in the classroom. We are using virtual. How are we going to get this? How are we going to communicate these concepts to them? And that is where we want to remind you of virtual manipulatives. We're not in the physical space, but there are many virtual tools and resources that are available to us online, and we continue to encourage their use. <clears throat> so one of the virtual manipulatives that can be used with algebra is our pattern blocks, okay? And the link for these I'll be sharing too, and these links will be shared in the chat with you that you'll be able to even further explore after we have ended today's session. So along with using pattern blocks, you're also able to use algebra tiles. Yes, I know many of us, we kind of have put those tiles aside, whether it was from college, and we rarely even consider taking them into face-to-face. -face. So now what's happening virtual? So I'm going to, we are going to be going into a little online session where we're going to be looking at both. And we're going to be looking in relation to algebra, as that is the focus of our sample lesson. So just allow me now to go over to our, our websites. Okay, so we're first going to be looking at our pattern blocks. So we are using toy theater <clears throat> manipulatives and toytheater.com you can find a host of manipulatives that you can use in your mathematics class. Okay, so one of the things that we know about pattern blocks is that simply what we have, we have various shapes. And once we start looking at shapes now and we, we look at them as being different, or we look at them, uh, do they have anything that are alike? Then we start now looking at the properties that we, we think of those objectives and what are the things now that will need to come out and how can we use these pattern blocks in the lesson. So we can simply start by allowing students just to, to talk about the shapes that are here. So we can put, we put our shapes on our, our placemat. We're allowed to rotate them. Don't worry about that. The rotation at this point, not so important, but it's just because we know that for pattern tiles, we can also use it in other aspects of math to showcase transformation and so on. So it's applicable in geometry. So thus this, this um, manipulative here allows for the, the rotation when we want to use it in that way. So we're talking about light terms. So this is where students could represent those like terms by using shapes that are the same, all right? And just think about them being in class and doing this manipulation face-to-face. -face. The only difference now is that you as a teacher will have to be guiding them through it. But once you would have shared links in relation to these um, resources, on their own, students can go and do further practice with them. So we talk about using same shapes. So once we talk about same shapes, there we are aligning it now to like terms. Once we start putting a different shape onto the mat now, and we talk about can we can we say can we establish a total in terms of squares? 
for everything. And we talk about, we want to see, can students add these shapes together in terms of putting them and saying all of them are squares? So we want to bring out the idea of, of, of terms which are unlike. So allow students, and this is visual, this is very basic. This is what we call it concrete. We talk about CPA and we talk about concrete, we talk about the concrete pictorial and abstract. So this is taking students to the very basics of algebra. And you know, they're coming out of, of primary school where they would have been using some of these very manipulatives in class. So I'm not gonna be delving too much further, but just to say that pattern blocks, we can use them in algebra. We can also use them in growing patterns, which will encourage algebraic thinking. We can also use them when we want to explore fractions, when we want to do tessellations, when we want to do um, geometry in terms of symmetry, in terms of rotation, reflection, as I would have mentioned earlier. So our next virtual tool that we are going to be looking at, which would have mentioned, is our algebra tiles. So it hits the nail on the head because, as would have said, it's algebra. The algebra tile I'm sharing with you this afternoon is found on mathsbot.com. And these links are already in the chat. Please copy them, save them, practice, explore, get familiar with them. So this particular website allows us to not only not only place or not only to just look at our algebra tiles in terms of the positives and the negative. So we know that our yellow, green, and blue tiles, these are our positive tiles that are here on the left. On the right, we have our negative tiles. Good. So our smallest square tile is our unit tile. Then we have our rectangular tile, which is our variable tile. And then we have the larger square, which is our X square tile. So on this platform, you're able to select labels. And once you do that, your tiles will have the labeling on them. So very easy for recognition. With these labels as well, for this site, you can also rename your algebra tiles. So you notice I would have typed in Y. So now you no longer have X being displayed, but you now have your variable tiles being, lab being labeled as Y. Also, you're able to bring up a text box. In this text box, you're able to type a question, okay? So you're able to put an expression. If you're dealing with integer, you're able then to put your integer values here in this section. And I'm just gonna type just to just show that you're able to type in the box that is there. Now, you would have had all of this and you can simply use the tidy. If I select tidy, well, the tidy would remove what is there. So let me just put some, some tiles here just to show or just to do a little further demonstration. This is just simple integer. So we have five, we have negative five plus three. So once we drag a tile onto the mat, we can simply use the copy feature to replicate the tile. So we need five of those tiles. So we just need to replicate that tile. And there we have our negative five tiles. We want positive three. So once we place our positive three unit tile, we do a similar copy to replicate this tile onto the mat. Once this replicating is done, so the next thing we want to show students is what the answer will be. So the beauty again of this particular website manipulative is that once we, we, we put our negative combine or negative and positive tile, we immediately see the zero pair being created. So students are able to see that a zero pair is created and what is left. So what they're left with is negative, perfect for integer. Good, so we're just gonna tidy just to take that tile off. And of course, if we want to extend it now to algebra, um, we just simply put on, so where we have 
y there. So let me just change the variable to y. All right, for demonstration. So we have five and negative five y plus um, three y. So the only difference here is that this time we would now be using our variable tiles. So for integer, we'd be using our unit tiles. But once we come over now into our, our expressions that we can simplify using algebra tiles, and you know, algebra tiles have a wide range of applications or uses when it comes to our algebra lessons. And I encourage you teachers to utilize it. So as we would have said earlier, you can go ahead, you can replicate, replicate your tiles, just as you did your unit tiles on this platform, they can be moved around. And then similarly, as we did with the unit tiles, a negative and positive, zero pair, and that is gone. We use our tidy tool to clear our mat. We still have to do the backspace to delete what we would have written. You know, we talk about when we're ready to factorize and we're used to seeing, or I know some algebra tile programs or our software resources will give you the mat, which allows you to do your placement. We also have our vertical and horizontal, which can be used. All right, so this tool also has it. Once I do tidy, that is also cleared. So um, I just want to encourage you teachers that these resources are here and we want you to enhance the, syn the synchronous um, uh, experience for your students by sharing these virtual tools with them. So we are going to now continue with the presentation. Okay, so let us just, as I said, let us just continue, but more so, as I said, you know, this session, we want to just encourage you to get with it, get with our resources. We are here to support you in any way that you like. So I thank you and I now invite Mrs. Hales to continue with this section of the presentation. Thank you, Ms. Townsend. Good afternoon, everybody. Happy New Year to those I have not spoken to since the start of the new year. All right, as we go into this part of the session, we're looking at a sample lesson. And for our sample lesson, we know that while we're not face-to-face, -face, we still have to ensure that the key components of our lesson plan is in place. So our plan will look differently and so on, but for example, we need to make sure that our five E's are in place, our mathematics teaching practices are there. Um, we're utilizing the MTPs, mathematics teaching practices, we're utilizing the student mathematical practices or four Cs, all of these components are critical for our lesson plans. So yes, we're doing it um, not face-to-face -face anymore. We're not necessarily having these written plans anymore. And we're executing in different modalities, whether through Google Meet or WhatsApp. But we have to ensure that we're paying key attention, that we're putting all of these necessary components in place. So as we progress through the lesson, we're going to be utilizing it in terms of the 5E model. And we will see parts of the other components showing up throughout the lesson as we go along. So I'm gonna focus basically here now on Google Meet and we're gonna start the engagement of the lesson. Now, when you're executing, one of the things I like about these sessions is that the creativity, you can really get very creative when you're utilizing these modalities online. All right, so again, in our Google Meet session, we must sensitize students each day as to what our objectives are for the day. And we can share that in the stream. So we start, of course, by greeting our students, outlining our objectives, and inviting them to join us for the live session. And usually that's done through a link or so on. All right, so again, for this session, we're going to be focusing on algebra, looking at identifying like and unlike terms, adding them, subtracting them, and so on. So for our engagement activity, this activity is just a little activity, of course, that we want to ensure that our students have the necessary prerequisites to access our lesson. So for the engage, we want to pique their interest and test for 
um, prior understanding of the content that they're going into. And we can try to use very creative ways to do this. So for this particular engagement activity, we're looking at like and unlike terms. And while we normally start off with variables and so on, we're trying to take a little different approach this time. So in this particular activity, we're looking at a grocery list. All right. And we're inviting students to look at the list and they're going to be they're going to listen to the advertisement associated with the list and then they're going to proceed by answering the question which follow. So let us listen to the advertisement that accompanies this particular engagement task. As we wait for the audio to play. So okay. uh, my apologies. I think we're having a little technical difficulty with that audio, Mrs. Hill. <clears throat> All right. So this particular audio is um it's just an audio ad that is basically the instruction for the students. And the ad is actually sharing with students that they are, there's a sale at this particular supermarket or whatever it is. And the sale is offering a three for 10, three for 10 discount. So buy three items, three similar items, and you'll get a 10% discount. All right. So they're looking at the list and then they're going to be given a task following this. Go ahead, Miss. They're going to be given a task that is going to show them specifically what items are being bought and they're going to be calculating the total bill that is to be paid based on the advertisement all right so here they're looking at collecting like terms and doing calculations with it and in addition to utilizing the idea of like terms they're also um, tying this in in terms of integration with other concepts that they would have been familiar with before. So they're looking at their consumer arithmetic concepts, they're looking at percentages and so on. So we're, we're trying to ensure that whatever angle we take our algebraic approach from, our students are geared and ready to respond. So algebra is not limited to just the variables and just adding and subtracting them and so on. We can take them into other aspects of math and we can utilize it that way. So we try to be creative and let students see that there is an integration aspect that is available for every topic that they're doing in math. And the more we integrate it for them when, they, when they're at their CXC exams or external exams or so on, and they will recognize that there's a lot of integration taking place with the nature of the questions that are posed to them, it, they would be familiar with the ideas already, all right? So the task coming up is just an engagement task. After this, we're looking at the item itself and what they were asked to do. So this is just a creative way that you can get students to access the lesson, find out what they know from what they don't know, and at the same time, engaging with the concepts relevant to the task. I now hand over to Ms. Townsend as she takes us through the other part of the session the exploration activity. Come. Okay, thank oh, I'm sorry. you. Okay. <laughs> thank you, Mrs. Hales. Um, let me just apologize for some technical challenges that we're experiencing at this time. However, we are going to be progressing. I think Mrs. Hales would have done an um, would have been able to just share with you the idea of what the that the engagement activity would have and as we said looking at students exploring algebra in a different way so now in our exploration activity you know what is it that students should be doing when they are exploring so really at this stage we want students to get involved in the topic we want them at the end of it to have or to come out with building their own understanding of what is happening, their own understanding 
of the topic, their own understanding in terms of the concepts that are there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So within Google Meet, we know that once we share, once we, we, we are presenting and we share our, our screen, um, this sharing can be done. When we share, we can share our Microsoft Word documents, we can share our PowerPoints as we would have expressed before. So this is just showing the activity being shared in Google Meet with students. So we are continuing a path of looking at a grocery store that is now doing deliveries in the pandemic. Okay, and there are specific items here that they're delivering, and we're going to be focused on the customers themselves. The customers themselves, and what is it that they have ordered, what we were able to deliver, and how this is managed within the, the operation of the business itself. Good. So students would have, been, would have got the first part of the question to get an overview of what this, quest, this task is about. So now they want to be a little more specific. So we talk about the questioning that will happen now on this task. So we want students to be able to examine the table, the information that is there, and we are asking them now to write expressions. So for question A of question one, they are to be looking at the table and they are to write an expression based on the order, the cases of tissue that was ordered. So notice that the number ordered is there. So we have two and we also have a variable beside tissue. So right away, we know where we, we, we probably can start thinking of what our students may write or the variations of answers that we may get. But from the entire part A of the question, they are representing all three items using expressions. What are some of the questions that we can ask the students? Once we get them to start writing these expressions, we can think about asking them questions like, what do you notice about the expressions or terms? So we have to introduce the vocabulary to students. What do you think? You know, we're talking about the letters here. Another name for these letters, you know, what's the other name that we could use? So in the question, we had asked about letters, but no, we were leading them to be speaking about them in terms of them being variables. Think about why is it that the letters that are used or the variables that are used are different. So we start asking them to look at what they're written and the fact that the variables that are used are different and we're bringing out unlike terms. Good. When we bring them to the point of actually writing an expression for total, we want to keep the questioning going because now we know that when we talk about total in math, we're talking about summing, we're talking about putting portions together. And normally it would result in one, in one term or we're saying one, one whole. And it, it comes out now, but then with these expressions, the fact that these variables are not the same, are we able to get one expression or one term to represent this total? So that is where you would have to bring out now the discussion about what are like, what are unlike, and what we're able to do in situations that having like and unlike term. So this activity continues and it goes into actually looking now at continuing, you know, just the, as they're exploring, doing more questions, experiencing, you know, putting like terms together and also unlike terms and writing these expressions, establishing the relationship now, um, what are the things which, which, which would result in terms being referred to as like terms, having the same variable, the fact that they will have the same power Good. Unlike terms, we'll have different variables. Then we go to almost the last part of the activity grade. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. So we're talking now about bringing into the negatives in place. So this part, it's still continuing the same task, but now it's back to the supervisor and a coding system used. So based on the information there, I know that as I said, and one of the things I want you to notice is that we're not just throwing the entire task out there to the students at once. 
and leaving them to be laboring and we're just questioning and questioning. It is important that in the synchronous approach that we break the parts of the question and allow students work with students through each part so that connections can be made. So they would start very simple and then they are building as they progress through the task, but along the way, they're being allowed to explain. So though we may not have that, that easy written out to say, oh, this is where students are going to explain right throughout this breaking of the task, students are allowed to share their, their response, they're allowed to critique. And through your questioning, you're able to highlight those concepts that will address the objectives that you would have set out for the lesson. So right here, when we look at the table and we want to talk about representing the number outstanding, an example is there in the table whereby that number that is outstanding is being represented by a negative. Good. And this is where we want students to observe what is happening. So we have negative six and a positive six that results in a zero all right and versus a negative six plus a positive three being having a number outstanding of negative three and what is happening is that this coding system is a system that is put in place by the supervisor so what is ordered is negative the company is losing stock good so it is registered as what is going out so those negative when the order is delivered, so this is where now you're representing, you know, you could not deliver the order delivered by the same using the same symbol. So we know we're using positive. So whatever was not ordered, it has to be still negative because we still have to deliver that at some point. So until it is delivered, it still will have to remain as negative. So I hope that has answered your question. Very good question. Thank you. So it tells me that you're moving along with me. So though we're not, we're not working the questions here, let us, you know, I want you to also reflect on the algebra tiles that we looked at and see how now you could transfer some of these expressions onto the, the resource and to actually take students through to correct all of those little questions that they may, may have, especially when it comes to this part of the activity so that they can see why these these answers will result in a negative rather than a positive okay so this is how you know this i said this is just a sample of activity that you can do with your students on the google meet platform And of course, we would not leave this, leave this exploration se segment without allowing our students to have, you know, what are the like terms, what are unlike terms, and just to make sure that they leave this portion of the lesson having that understanding. So one of the things that, you know, even summing up all of this, what we could do is actually have our students listen to a particular rhythm and then utilize that now to write what they know or what they understand now about simplifying like and unlike terms. Okay? And, and this is something that you know we just bring really a little a little light to that in part of the class. Okay. Okay, so now that we have looked at the exploration activity we are going to just look at what will the elaboration activity look like? How will we extend this for the students? So Mr. Johnson, I now hand over to you, sir. All right, thank you, Ms. Townsend. All right, so we move on now to the elaboration or extension activity. So just to remind us that this activity or this E really involves the student being able now to apply what they would have learned, knowledge or skill now in a practical way or to some new situation to deepen and extend their conceptual understanding and also improve skills, right? So the, what we're looking at now is actually the activity. The activity is a maze. 
And uh, um, it was created in PowerPoint from scratch. And we are saying that we're using the platform of Google Meet. All right. So in Google Meet, when you're sharing, you will see this little bar comes up, right? You can always click and hide it if it is blocking any information. So let us just take a look at the activity itself and what it involves. So you notice that you have some boxes. Within the boxes, you may have questions or items. The boxes are all labeled from A to L. There's a start and there's a finish. And we have some color coding going on here. The color coding is just the different rounds of items that will be asked. Now, let me just pull up on the pointer. So here we have, just give you a quick example at the start, which is a like term of negative 3x. Student would now have the option of taking one of three pathways. They could take this one negative three, which would take them to E. They could take this diagonal, which would take them to F, and they could take the horizontal pathway, which would take them to D. All right, and this will continue to go on until student would have gone all the way through to L. Just to continue here. Okay, so now we, if we're using PowerPoint, we have the opportunity to actually manage the pace at which students do the activity. So to focus students and to help them to go through the activity at a pace that we feel is comfortable um, for us and for the student, we could just show one item at a time. After all the students would have made their choices, we could move on and have the other items come on or appear as we go. So as soon as they, everyone has, would have made their choices, then you can make the other items appear. All right, so we just want to look at the activity in detail a little bit more quickly as time is against us now. Um, so I'll just give you one minute or so just to put in the chat. Um, how would you get from A to L? And just, just to, while you're doing that, to just quickly look to see if the objectives of the lesson would have been accomplished. And if, if there are any math practice that you see would have been coming out or jumping out to you. So let me just give you a quick, a quick minute to do so. Um, excuse me, Mr. Johnson. Yes. I think there is one person in the chat who is indicating that they don't quite understand the activity. So I don't know if you could just quickly just give a, 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 another overview just to help that person. All right. Fine. OK, so I guess we can we can use our pen quickly. So here we are at, at A. So the student would have started here, right? Which is a like term of negative three X. Now there are three pathways that the child or options that the child can take, right? Based on the child understanding of what would be a like term of negative three X, the child can say negative X squared which would not be a like term. A child could say, could use, look at the coefficient and say negative three. Or the child could say one half X, which would have been correct, right? Then the child would have moved to B and would have this um, item, which is an unlike term of eight Q. Then the child has some options again, 
based on his or her understanding. The child would follow this process until he or she reaches L. All right, so based on this activity, would you say, would the teacher be able to diagnose the student's weaknesses or strengths? All right, are we getting anything in the chat? All right, yes, yes. All right, good. Because as was said, if we should just quickly just look at the first one, if the child chooses negative, if the child chooses negative three, we realize right away that the child is really just looking at the coefficient, right? And um, based on the choices that the child would have, um, that are the pathways that the child would have taken, we can realize um, the strength and weaknesses of the child, all right? So we would love to go further in this activity, but we are, time is against us. So um, we're just going to turn over the time now to Dr. White to go through the evaluation activity. Okay, thank you, Mr. Johnson. Um, as we move into the evaluation activity, we remember um, we are aware that the, um, the evaluation or the assessment must mirror the objective. And this is where we're going to assess students learning. Okay. So for the evaluation, uh, okay, it's coming up. All right. So this is where we administer the formative assessment to test what students learn. So the teacher's responsibility is to assess the student's knowledge and skill. And the student's responsibility is to demonstrate an understanding or knowledge of the concept and skills. So here is, a, you may not be able to see this very clearly, but this is what it would look like if you were on the meet. It's basically the questions that are posted on the meet. But here are the questions. I notice I start with terminology, um, vocabulary that was used from the engagement down to the um, elaboration. So the students must know the vocabulary um, based on the topic that is being taught. Then I move into some non-routine questions. Um, just starting with mechanical questions will not help to the students to use their critical thinking skills. So I move into some non-routine questions. Notice the first question is, has to do with geometry, the parameter or measurement, the parameter of a triangle. Now they should be able to apply the skills learned in the engage, exploration, and the elaboration to answer these questions. And then in question three now, you can move into some of the mechanical questions. All right, and these can be done either on Google Meet or on WhatsApp. If it's on Google Meet, the students turn in their work, this is how it would appear. You would go to the, um, go to the topic that is on the Meet, select the topic. Um, this would come up, you select the questions, the student's paper, they are right here. You would select a paper, this is what would be on the paper, not necessarily what was taught just now. I just did a, um, a copy of a paper. So this is a child's work. You want to make a comment. You would first of all have to highlight something that you want to comment on. If you look clearly, you will see that the answer that I have here, it is highlighted or I block it. But when I press on the, let me go back a minute. If I press on the plus sign, it will now highlight it so I can make a comment. I highlight it and so now I select it. I can now make a comment, write my comment here. And after the comment, I would post the comment. When I post the comment in the meet, 
this is what would appear. So when you return the paper, I notice over here it says return. And you can also make a private comment to the child here and put the grade here. So notice when I make the comment, um, this changes, it is highlighted and the comment is right here. So the child will see exactly what it is that I am saying about what was done. And basically that's it for evaluation. I now hand over back to Ms. Thousand. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. White. So what we have basically um, taken you through, um, colleagues, is just looking at the lesson in relation to Google Meet. So we'd have gone through from the engagement right through to, our, to the evaluation of the lesson. So now we are quickly going to be exposing you to what this lesson can look like in WhatsApp. We will not be able to go through in, in detail, but you will be able to get a synopsis of parts of the lesson in WhatsApp. And Dr. White will quickly take us through all of those little features on WhatsApp. And that will be followed by Mrs. Hales, who will look at how the lesson will actually look on the phones in WhatsApp and give you more tips as to how to engage your students. Okay, thank you, Ms. Townsend. So what do we know about WhatsApp? We know that we can have synchronous session on WhatsApp, real time. We know we can have conference call. You want to call and speak with a group of students, you can group them up together and have a conference call. You can also ask, um, you can have an entire class by asking each child to call two or three um, of their classmates and you can end up talking with the entire class. We can also do chats, whether it's group or individual. We can also use voice notes, to, uh, sorry, leave voice notes for our students, whether in a group or individual. And I know some of you are, or most of us would be um, aware of all these features. Okay, let's move on quickly. How do we transfer um, files on WhatsApp? So the first thing we do is to select the WhatsApp icon. Okay, following the WhatsApp icon, we're going to click on chat. After clicking on chat, and this is how it would appear. You are going to select, find the person or the group you want to send the file to, then tap on it, okay? After that, you, you would tap on the paper clip. It's at the bottom here. That's depending on the phone you're using. If it's an iPhone, it would be the plus sign, okay? But something will come up, either the plus sign or the paper clip. After doing that, the next step is to tap the document button. Once you tap the paper clip, it will bring this page up. You want to transfer the file, it's in a document. The document um, icon will come up. You tap um, on the document. When you tap the document, you will, get the, you will search through for the file that you want to send. And of course, you send it off to your recipient. And that would be transferring files. Now, well, the box would come up and ask you, you know, do you want to cancel or do you want to send? Did you select the correct file or is it the correct one that you want to send? You go ahead and send it. Now, if you are transferring, um, you can also transfer multiple documents all at the same time. Tap and hold all of them and you will be able to select those and send them off. You can also share images from your camera roll by tapping gallery or audio files by tapping, um, tapping audio. So there are many things that we can do on WhatsApp and it's only for us to be knowledgeable about what, how to have them done. Media sharing is the same as transferring files. However, instead of selecting documents, we would choose photo and library and that would take us to the media files. Okay, I've seen some persons marking assignment, but maybe not everybody aware that you can also mark assignment in the Meet as well as on WhatsApp. So you want to mark your student assignment. The first thing you do is to click on the assignment picture. Okay. You will notice that you will either see three dots, vertical dots or the share icon. Then you click share, whichever is on your phone. 
you select WhatsApp, then select the recipient, click on the green arrow at the bottom, that's right here. So this is WhatsApp. And if you can see, you notice I was, I've selected my recipient right here. And then I would click the green button right here on the screen. That would take me to the pen icon, nice colors. You, all you need to do now is to select the color that you would want to use, choose the color. Once you choose the color, you can go ahead and put your tick. Hopefully it's not an X. You put your tick and there you would have marked the child's work or the student's work. And the next thing you do is to send the assignment, the marked assignment, go back to your recipient and click send. And that would take you to, that would um, send the message or send back the marked assignment to your students. Thank you very much. I'll now hand over to Mrs. Hales who will take us through aspects of a lesson, um, lesson delivery using WhatsApp. Thank you, Dr. White. As I prepare to share. So in WhatsApp, we basically are going to be looking at excerpts of the same lesson that we looked at just now. And um, because we're focused on a synchronous lesson, it means that we want to have our students engaged for the duration of the class time. So it means therefore that we must have the consistent communication between ourselves and our students. And as we see here, it says lesson delivery in WhatsApp. So that's where we're heading. So again, the first thing you'd want to do in your WhatsApp lesson is to send a message to your students, um, greeting them and sharing with them the topic for the day as well as the objectives. So they know exactly where you're going. And as was said before, you're breaking down the components of the lesson and soliciting students feedback as you progress. So this is the similar warm up activity we looked at. So we're saying to students, um, not necessarily writing it as engagement activity for them to see that word engagement. So we reword it as say a warm up activity. So it's a grocery bill task, examine the following price list, listen to the advertisement, and then complete the task which follow. So here, that's a price list. We're sending it as a picture. And Dr. White outlined how we do that. And I'm sure many of us are familiar with that idea as well. And then we're sending them the audio file along with the picture. Um, just to briefly play the audio file, um, sharing with your creative you can get. And get 10% off. You can't afford to miss it. Offer stands well. Come, come, come. It's our three for 10 special. Buy three similar items can get 10. All right. Come, come, come. It's our three for 10 special. Buy three similar items can get 10% off. You can't afford to miss it. Offer stands while stock snacks. All right. So, of course, that's your voice being creative and sharing with them, getting them excited and so on about the topic. And then this is a task that you're allowing them to do. So, you would have snipped. Um, the part of the picture that you want them to focus on, share it with them again, and then give them the task that you want them to do. And you're doing this in small chunks, as we said before, because you want to guide them through the lesson. So at each juncture that you have shared, with some, shared something with them, you're soliciting their feedback. All right. Um, as we go through, you're sending additional messages, and then you're sharing with them exactly how you want them to respond. So you can say, write your solution or send me a picture or send me a voice note about what your responses are and so on. Also bear in mind that because they tend to have limited data or so on as it relates to um, working through WhatsApp, you still have to be careful about all the things that you send that they have to download. So you bear that in mind as you progress, but also share with them that there are different ways that they're able to back up all the information that they have, they can email it to themselves and so on, so that they create space on their device for your daily engagement, because you will definitely need to share things with them, in particular pictures and voice notes and so on. 
All right. And then now you're changing um, gear. A, excuse me, Mrs. Sales. Um, yes, just before you just before you continue with that part of the activity, um, one of our participants would like to know how we do that audio. How did we make that audio? How do you create that audio? Okay, well, I did it by just creating an audio file, go to record on my phone. So I created the audio file on my phone. So I use just recording as if I was doing a voice note or just use the recording section on the phone. And then I created that, emailed it to myself and then downloaded it. Um, so I could share it that way. Or I could just send it because I'm putting it in this presentation, then I emailed it to myself and download it. If I'm using it only on WhatsApp, then I would just pre-record it and share it with my students by sharing the audio file at the time when I'm going to share, send it to the students. So that's also another tip too, because as you guide your students through your lesson, in your planning, you could pre-record some audio clips for your class. And at the appropriate time in the lesson, you share that audio clip with them instead of you speaking um, live to them. But you're conducting the lesson live, but the audio clip would have been pre-recorded. All right, so that's how I did it for this one. Um, hope that answers your question. All right, so again, now in WhatsApp, we're changing gears. So we're not telling them everything at once, we're changing gears. So we're noting to them now that we're shifting gears to another portion of the lesson. So we're going into another activity and that's activity two. So we type that in so they know we're going to another component. And here, the same exploration activity that we had in terms of Google Meet, you can also, instead of typing bits of it, you can use what you would have done in Microsoft Word or so on, download, I mean, print it, take a picture and send the appropriate part of that lesson at the appropriate time in the lesson. So you're not sending them the entire document at the same time. So you snip the picture by um, cropping the picture to the part that you want to focus on and you share that part at that time. That's one way. The other way would be to um, have it on your screen, take a screenshot because you can download it on your phone, screenshot your phone and crop the picture to the part that you want and share it at that time. So if you notice, we're breaking up this exploration activity. So this is the introductory component of the exploration activity. That task is shared. And then you're sharing the other part now, which is a question, and you're typing, share your responses here, and so on. So they know that you're focused on one part at a time. And you encourage them to share their response. And of course, you'll analyze your responses as you get them. Again, in WhatsApp, you don't have to, you're not seeing them face to face to let them see you're smiling or to let them see you're happy with their responses and so on. So you have to make an effort to utilize, I hope I pronounce this word right, but your emojis to show them what your feelings are as it relates to their responses. So you can send them a clap hand to say yes, a thumbs up, a smile and so on as long as you're satisfied with your responses and so on. If you're not satisfied, you can type what it is or say what it is through a voice note that you'd want to encourage them to think along the lines of. But at the same time, you want to keep it as positive as possible. And if there's something you need to correct, of course you do so quite calmly and in a manner that students would be more likely receptive to that response, all right? So again, you're going through and you don't always have to type because here again is the other component, you're, re you're requesting their responses, but you could also share a voice note with them at different points to solicit their responses, give them an idea of what it is you're expecting the, along the line of as it relates to their responses and so on. So in the lesson, it's not just typing and so on. I've observed many lessons where teachers of course do their voice notes as well. That is extremely important because you want to keep the students connected to you as the teacher and hearing your voice is very powerful as you try to guide them throughout a lesson when you're not seeing them, all right? So in WhatsApp, you try to engage them, break it down in small pieces, have them focus on different pieces, and you're doing the lesson live, so you want it to span for the hour, you providing information to them at selected points, them giving you feedback at selected points, and of course, you can go through and summarize your lesson at the end of that. And 
make um, adjustments and mark pieces that they would have sent you and so on using the techniques shared by Dr. White. Um, so that takes us to the end of this component and I now hand it back to Mr. Johnson. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Hills. All right, so Ms. Townsend. Okay, yes, Mr. Johnson. And we just want to teachers, we just we're thankful that at this time we're going up to three o'clock. And I know that you have been very patient with us in our delivery this afternoon. And we just want to thank you for your continued support. And we hope that you have been able to in this session, grasp some new classes as you know, you continue to engage the students. We know there are several challenges which may exist, 